Hello everyone. So today in this video, I want to talk about uh, script runner. Yes. Now, if you watch my videos or if you have uh, watched my videos on uh, script runner, I'm sure you have uh, been following my channel for a while. I of course talk a lot about uh, script runner, and that is one of the focus of my channel: automation and doing wonderful things with uh, Jira. Now. When you're using script runner, you will of course be writing scripts and especially if you're writing scripts for data center, server, on-prem, you can of course do it using the script console online and you uh, can of course definitely write uh, scripts. That is not really a problem, but I personally prefer to write scripts using IntelliJ because it will keep things, uh, it will actually make things very simple and convenient for you and you can actually focus more on the, for focus more on implementing your uh, your logic. For example, I use Emacs and I can definitely write the scripts using uh, Emacs. But uh, when you're using IntelliJ with some configurations in place, you can be super quick. And my focus is to <laughs> basically write the logic that I want to write using uh, Groovy. Now, I have mentioned that if you're using IntelliJ or if you want to use IntelliJ, you can do that by uh, basically using this uh, Git repository that you can download from, that you can use from script runner's documentation. Basically, you will get like a, uh, I mean, once you clone that repository on your local computer and when you uh, start your Jira instance, it will basically install Jira along with, uh, it will basically start Jira with script runner installed. Now that actually is something that I um, recommend uh, instead of writing scripts uh, um, basically online. And when you're writing scripts using that method, you can actually version control your scripts and then you can make sure that those scripts are, uh, uh, I mean, you can always uh, tell your uh, script editor console to look for those files using file tab in instead of using inline uh, script that you can write. So that actually works really well, but the problem is that it might, it can be a bit slow. And uh, although it comes with a pom.xml file, I find it that uh, there are few things that you might find difficult to configure. And let me show you what, I, what I'm talking about. So this is the pom.xml, which is not really from the script owner repository. It is actually the Atlassian SDK. So basically what I started doing now, I basically use Atlassian SDK to configure, set up my own local instance of Jira. And it will come, it will actually create a pom.xml file for you. And what you can do in this particular file, you can do some, some changes. Like for example, you can specify the uh, JVM arguments. Like for example, uh, this is, this is the problem with the script in our repository. You can definitely specify this uh, JVM arguments like memory settings here, but for some reason it never really worked for me ever. And uh, maybe maybe I'm, I'm, I missed something, but I also tried passing these arguments using command line. I also tried a uh, uh, lot of other things, but uh, it never really worked. I was never, never really able to increase the memory, but using Atlassian SDK, the same line will work wonderfully well. So you can do that. You can also disable the uh, dev mode. And this is something that I recommend because if you're not really doing full fledged development, just disable it. It will be your instance would be much quicker, faster. I know some people actually don't even use this as to, like they, they don't really run Jira like this. They basically have like a Docker container where they have their own image that that they use that is probably much faster but for my needs because i just want to write scripts locally uh, i think this method works for me and what you can also do in, in this uh, pom.xml you can also and this, by the way this form pom.xml is nothing but atlassian sdk so when you try to create a new plugin you're using Atla atlassian sdk you can actually get this pom.xml the only change i did is uh, i added this line here along with system property variables where I am disabling dev mode and also caches. Also, you can specify the Jira software version like this. Uh, for example, you may want to work on the latest version of Jira and also for Jira service desk. And you also want to make sure that these like Jira software and Jira service desk is installed for you when you have your uh, Jira up and running. So you can do that. Just make sure that uh, you specify the Jira uh, service, uh, Jira so service desk version and Jira software version here like this. And that is it. That is all you need to do. And, and of course, right now I'm not really developing a plugin. I'm basically writing my scripts, but this method is actually much faster than, you know, doing some, I mean, I can definitely try Docker. 
I'm not really sure if Docker method will probably work even on my computer because it is because I, the computer that I use is very very old. I use ThinkPad X220, which is like 11 year old computer laptop, and it works. The only thing that you might need for sure is you need more RAM. So on my laptop, I have uh, uh, 16 GB RAM, and uh, I can see memory. For example, if I look right now, I can see my computer is consuming right now 9.5 GB, which is def definitely a lot. And uh, it is working fine. For example, um, I'm making a video. I'm also running uh, this Jira uh, as instance locally. And I'm also opening, or I'm also working on IntelliJ. I'm also using my browser. Uh, so it works. It is not, not really slow. And let me sh actually show you my Jira instance. And uh, why not? I mean, I can just uh, show you how my Jira behaves. Um, so I'll use this. So it is. So what I'm, what I'm trying to show you is that uh, you don't really need to use uh, like the latest and greatest laptop. You can still use an old laptop like mine. And if you ever find it difficult to work with at with the script owner, uh, because as per the documentation, if you read and if you try to follow the steps for configuring IntelliJ, it might be slow. Um, it will be slow for sure. But because you, I, I was not really able to configure the memory, to be honest. And and I also tried doing it on other laptops, but it was it was slow and I was never really able to configure memory uh, JVM settings. But using Atlas and SDK, it is much more simpler. And I tried doing a lot of things. And again, I just want to write my scripts. I don't really want, want to spend like two days trying to fix those issues i might try to look at it but i think uh, what i have done yeah i've also done one more thing let me just show you so apart from configuring the memory settings i have also spe specified here in the jvm arguments the script root so what i want to do is i want my uh when I, because when you are uh, writing your uh, scripts uh, i prefer to to use the file tab instead of doing inline editing so you can actually look at look at the path here that you can specify using this uh, the plugin dot script dot roots, and uh, if I show you my console script console, come on. So as you can see, it is it, it is quite fast, right? I mean, although I'm doing local development and uh, it is using Atlas and SDK, with these configurations, my Atlas my, my local Jira instance is is not bad. I mean, it is not super fast. It is not like okay great but it works it works uh, quite nicely and uh, let me just uh, run let me just create an issue right um, so as you can see all the scripts are here right I, I, and uh, this is coming because i have configured the script root so i can uh, run this to create a new issue and it has created this issue for me it is not bad it is not bad i mean i can live with it uh, i mean i'm happy with it in fact it is not slow at all it is workable um, and when you're doing some development work, it is always, I mean, you have to basically uh, live with few things. But for me, because I have disabled the quick, I think, I don't really think I have quick reload here, which is something I think I disabled. Um, but um, it works really nice for me. And I thought I'll probably share it with you because if you're doing development using, uh, if you're trying to build your scripts, uh, you may want to configure this thing. I mean, um, you may want to use Atlas and SDK instead of, uh, Adaptivist's uh, recommended Git repository that you can clone. I mean, I, 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 I think that is definitely you should be looking at. But if you think it is slow, or if you are not really, really able to configure the memory settings, then just use Atlas and SDK. That is all I wanted to talk about in this video. And that is it. That is all I wanted to share and uh, talk about today. I hope you found this video useful and you learned something new. Thank you very much. Bye bye.